Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, for those of you that have been following the channel, for the last couple of weeks you've noticed I've had a little bit of back and forth with a YouTube creator on the flat earth side by the name of P-Brain. Now, P-Brain thought it was a good idea to challenge me on a photograph of Mount Rainier and a shadow cast on the clouds over the mountain as proof of the spherical rotating earth. That didn't work out very well for him, uh, and I responded to it. But then he put out another video. So, being a good sport, I responded to that. Then he put out a third video. And I came to a realization that my initial impression of him was wrong. At first, I thought he was just somebody that didn't understand perspective very well and was so locked into his flat earth narrative that he couldn't accept evidence. But the truth is a little more sinister. If you look back at Flat Earth Can't Science, episode number one, you'll see this screenshot. This is a flat earther that tried to claim he was at 10 foot of elevation in an observation of the Bathurst Lighthouse. And with this one photograph right here, we proved that he lied about that. He falsified his data. And I think one of the things that got me into Flat Earth is that I got tired of looking at people commit fraud and falsify data to try and support uh, a narrative and recruit people to their little movement. P-Brain, as it turns out, is not a stupid person. He's extraordinarily manipulative. In fact, he's playing the Flat Earth. He played Globebusters, Phuket Word, D-I-T-R-H, and several smaller flat earthers, probably for subscribers and views, with uh, his little quote-unquote takedowns of Big Bad Bob the Science Guy. And I'm going to show you how he did it in this episode. So, let's cue up the music, and then I think you'll find the rest of the episode interesting. <laughs> So the very first thing that P-Brain does is he tries to get allies and illicit support for his little cause. So he puts out a little meme of me that's, you know, rather demeaning to me. And then he puts out a funny little song about me. And then he proceeds to give the standard flat earth narrative, uh, the assertions, the switching of the burden of proof, blah, 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 blah. Have a listen. You cannot prove the ball. We prove the flat earth pretty overwhelmingly. The earth is flat. Visually, that's our experience. And the earth is not moving. So the, really, the burden of proof is on you. But you guys aren't honest enough to admit that. But the burden of proof is on you. You guys cannot prove a spinning ball. And all of the observations we see show that we're on a flat, immovable, or motionless earth that in order for the mountain to cast that shadow on the clouds above it, the sun had to be coming from an angle or an altitude lower than the peak of the mountain. Now in this section, I state my one and only argument when it comes to this photograph of the shadow cast by Mount Rainier. If you look at the top illustration, you see the sun is above Mount Rainier. The shadow will be cast downward at an angle. It is impossible for that shadow to appear on the cloud duck above the peak of Mount Rainier. The only way that you can get a shadow on the cloud deck is if the sun is shining from below the peak of Mount Rainier. Otherwise, it simply can't happen. Now notice that in the top illustration, there's a little man standing in the shadow. That's P-Brain. Now P-Brain's argument is going to be to rephrase my argument and say that if the sun is above the peak of the mountain, the shadow will be cast downward, but he could look up and see the shadow. Well, first of all, he would be in the shadow. He wouldn't look up and see it. Second of all, you're not going to look up and see a shadow on the clouds. You may see beams of light coming down as it streams past the top of the mountain, but you're not going to look up and see a shadow. You're going to see light up there. All right. But this is the argument that he's going to make. And then you claim it's casting a shadow on the underside of the clouds. When in fact, it looks to me like you see the shadow on the mountain. That's not on the clouds, the narrow part. And then as it spreads out, I don't know that that's on the clouds, but it, it doesn't matter, even if it is. 
The point is that the apparent height of the sun is lower than the apparent top of the mountain and will cast a shadow upwards from your perspective or your point of view. Now, did you see the classic straw man tactic that he used? He took my argument, he changed it, he attributed it to me, and then argued against his own argument. And then, unfortunately, he got it wrong anyhow. Now, there's a couple of things I want to show you on this diagram. First of all, everything between the sun and the mountain will be in sunlight. But I identified the beams of sunlight in the top here as being above the diagonal line. So everything up there would be bathed in sunlight. Down here where pea brain is, will be in shadow. So if he looks up, he's not going to see the border of a shadow. He's going to see the sunlight coming through. Likewise, on the bottom diagram, the sunlight will stream over the mountain and up to the clouds. Now the shadows, as you can see, are also angled upward and form a shadow on the clouds here on the right side of the diagram. And when I did a demonstration proving this in my office, he then changed his tune and said that the mountain was not below the clouds, the mountain was above the clouds, and the shadow was being cast down upon the top of the clouds. Well, you know what's going on? The top of the mountain is actually above the clouds. So, and what we see there is a shadow cast from the top of the mountain. You see, it's impossible to cast a shadow on the underside of clouds when the object that's casting the shadow, the top of the mountain, is above those clouds. Okay, now you see how he subtly changed his story? No longer are the clouds above the mountain. The mountain peak is now above the clouds, and the sun is casting a shadow down on the top of the clouds. I've got a couple of quick questions. You see right here, Globebusters picked this up and just praised it to no end. Well done, pea brain. You really played them. Well, I'll tell you what. I have a question for you, Globebusters. Specifically, for you, Bob. You claim to be a pilot. Well, just so happens I'm a pilot too, an instrument-rated pilot. Can you see shadows on top of the clouds from the ground? Can you see anything in clouds? Can you reliably tell what's up from down, even in the middle of the day, if you're in a cloud? No, you can't, can you? So here's my conclusion, Mr. Bob the Pilot. Either one, you approved this simply because it attacked me and it was a flat earth video and you like pea brain. You clearly either A, didn't watch it, or B, as a pilot, you don't know your butt from your bicep and you just missed it. So which is it? And I'm going to show you that this shadow that you think is going up is not going up. It can't be going up. It's impossible for it to physically actually be angled up. It's only visually angling up. Okay, except the only problem with that is the clouds are clearly well above the peak of the mountain. You see here are the clouds up here and here's the peak of the mountain and you can see light between the shadow on the clouds above and the top of the mountain. That mountaintop is not going through the clouds. It is well underneath the clouds. Well, by Bob brilliantly putting the second battery there behind the first battery, you can see that the shadow that would be cast off that front battery, or we call that the sign, right? The top black part is the sign would be cast slightly down below the sign on the second battery, both being the same size, right? Yes, pea brain, and that is why we can say conclusively that if the light source is above the peak of the mountain, it cannot cast a shadow on the clouds, which are also above the peak of the mountain. The shadow would be directed downward. You're assuming that the shadow is going upward. No, pea brain, I'm saying conclusively that this shadow is on the clouds which are underlit by the sun above this mountain because you can clearly see the gap between the top of the mountain and the clouds. 
I'm sorry you don't recognize that, but it doesn't change the fact that there it is. As a matter of fact, why don't you ask Bob if those clouds are above the mountain? He's a pilot, you know. He'll be able to tell you that with no problem at all. It's very obvious to anybody with a trained eye. You understand, right, that those clouds are not actually angled up and that the shadow needs to be cast on something. So the shadow is cast on the clouds. And so the clouds are parallel to the ground. They are not actually angled up. So what you're seeing is a perspective illusion. It can't be going upward because the clouds are parallel to the ground. Okay, let's say that's true. Fine. But then they go on to say, and they show a shadow like this, and they say, well, the only way this can be produced is that the sun is lower than the clouds. And that brings us back to this photo. This was taken by a flat earther down in Australia trying to claim that he could see something out of the Bathurst lighthouse that couldn't be seen on the globe below 25 feet. And he claimed that this photograph was taken from less than 10 feet above sea level. Looking at the size of the man and the position of the horizon and the measurements, it's very obvious that this was taken from at least 20 feet. He attempted to manipulate the evidence and falsify it to try and prove a, a flat earth point. P-Brain did the same thing here. Let me go ahead and show you what he did. And that's wrong because here I am, I'm about 15 feet from the light source. My light is above my bathroom vanity. Okay, before we go much further, I want you to have a look at this setup photograph. Now, according to P-Brain, this bathroom light is about seven feet high. And this plate that he's casting a shadow on is about three feet high. But I want you to pay attention to this railing right here. Look at the angle of this shadow. You see it? It's nearly parallel to the ceiling. All right. But we'll go ahead and let him continue. And it's about seven feet up. I'm sitting on the ground. So my eyes and camera are about three feet off the ground. I raised the cloud and mountain up about four feet off the ground. And sure enough, I get that same shadow. Okay, so right here is what I'm talking about using a little bit of critical thinking to evaluate a photograph. So again, here's our little mountain, and here's the shadow that it's casting from this light. Now the light is at seven feet, the plate is at three feet. There's something a little fishy about this, because what he's suggesting is happening is this right here. So the light is about here at seven feet, and the plate is over here at three feet, and is parallel to the ground. So tell me how the light from this light source going downward casts the shadow upward. It just doesn't make any sense. So when something doesn't make sense, you have to look and see how they did it. But first, let's go see what we actually expect. Now I did this myself as well. Notice that due to perspective, the light appears lower than the stool. And the light is not actually lower than the stool. Yeah, we got that. And now we'll see how the shadow can be cast on the bottom of the front stool. The light's still on top of the stool. I'll bring it to the front. Down, down, down. Oh, there's the shadow. Oh, up, up, up. Oh, it's just gone. Oh, why is it gone? The light appears to be lower. Oh, oh, it is lower now. But the shadow only comes when it's actually lower, not when it appears lower. Funny about that. That's a light source higher than my cloud and my mountain, just as we expect to see. No, P-Brain, that is not what we expect to see, and either did you, which is why you falsified it. Now here's a setup. I've got a styrofoam disc on two soda cans and underneath I've got a spray bottle cap and a bullet. Now as you see with a higher light source there is no shadow on the styrofoam above. But if I tilt the styrofoam up, it not only lights up from underneath, now we have a shadow. You falsified your test results, sir. 
And there it is, clear as day. Proof positive. You're a fraud, Pea Brain. Look at it again. Globebusters, D I T R H, Phuket word. This guy played you. He played the flat earth community too. He falsified this. Notice the shine at the leading edge of the dish. That's because it's tilted up and is catching the light. Look at the angle of that plate. Compare it to the angle of the shadow cast by the pole at the top of the door. He's got it tilted up, and it's a camera angle. He knows exactly what he's doing, and he played you. Okay, so all I really have to say to you guys that just absolutely went wild on P-Brain here, you got fooled. He played you. You guys need to clean up your own house, because I'm tired of pointing these things out for you, because you should have checked for this yourself. Bob, you knew better. Okay, to try and end this on a semi-positive note, I want to recognize two flat earthers that actually made some decent observations. On the bottom we have Cleary, who demonstrated that an intense spotlight shown on the ground in front of a mountain could cast a shadow upward. And the other one is Flat Earth Perth, who showed that ambient light from outside could actually cast a, a shadow up on the ceiling. These are both good efforts. However, why don't you go ahead and explain to me why that sunset is red in color and tell me if it's reflecting off of water, cornfields, tree-covered hills, or snow. If you can do that, you might be on to something. But if you can't, you just found an interesting thing. So, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. Uh, I'm sorry that I had to bring this to your attention, but somebody had to. Uh, Globebusters and the rest of the Flat Earth community is simply not policing itself. So, if you have a moment, hit that little like and subscribe button down in the lower right corner. And I appreciate it, and I'll see you again soon.